The United States has always been able to design deadly aircraft, but sometimes engineers have managed to exceed even the wildest expectations by practically designing an impenetrable tank with wings as opposed to an attack aircraft. In today's video, we'll be discussing the A-10 Thunderbolt II, which is celebrating an impressive 50 years in the skies this May. You'll learn about the battles in which the star of today's video took part, its modifications, and how long it will serve in the Air Force. The A-10 Thunderbolt II was named after the World War II fighter-bomber P-47 Thunderbolt. The pilots affectionately called the brainchild of the Fairchild Republic a warthog because of the specific type of nose it had, reminiscent of an African boar. In photos, it is often seen with a pattern of razor-sharp teeth. The Warthog's long history began in the jungles of Vietnam, which proved to be a difficult obstacle for the existing fleet of Republic Aviation's costly F-105 Thunder Chief and McDonnell Douglas's F-4 Phantoms. Back then, the main strike force for the United States was the A-1 Sky Raider from Douglas during the Korean War, a powerful specialized support aircraft with a decent payload and the ability to stay in the air seemed like a good solution. At the same time, however, its propeller design was too slow and vulnerable to enemy ground fire. Additionally, the aircraft's firepower was poor. This resulted in losses in excess of 266 A-1s during the Vietnam War. America, now more than ever, needed a hardy, specialized attack aircraft capable of withstanding shots from even anti-tank guns. Therefore, in 1961, the U.S. authorities, represented by Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara, ordered the U.S. Air Force to develop two tactical aircraft. One of them was to take on the role of a long-range strike force and interceptor, and the second would take the role of a fighter-bomber. That is how the F-111 Aardvark from General Dynamics appeared. The role of the fighter was given to the F-4 Phantom II from McDonnell Douglas, which later turned out to be too expensive both to purchase and to operate. In parallel to this, a battle was taking place between the U.S. Army and the Air Force regarding the helicopter power, which the latter noticeably lost due to the Army's choice in favor of the Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne, a combat-ready attack aircraft with excellent speed. It eventually became the main anti-tank force in Europe. A 1966 Air Force study of existing CAS capabilities identified gaps in tracking and firefighting functions that the Cheyenne could fill but the Air Force decided that it would be wiser to put more effort into creating a potential successor to the A-1. But what about the A-10? In 1966, U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff John P. McConnell ordered a design of the specialized CAS, or Closed Air Support, aircraft as part of the AX Attack Experimental Program, setting forward a number of requirements for the future device. But in 1970, the U.S. Air Force changed its requests for a future aircraft, now having an eye on Soviet armed forces and the need to conduct offensive operations in all weather conditions. The aircraft was designed with a 30mm swivel cannon in mind and had a top speed of 460 miles per hour, a 4,000-foot takeoff distance, and an external load of 16,000 pounds, a fixed range of 285 miles, and a unit cost of over $9.3 million, although at that time it was only $1.4 million. The real cost of the A-10 today would be more than $45 million, since back in the 1980s, the last models released from the assembly line cost taxpayers $18 million. Under the 30mm cannon was a separate RFP with an impressive rate of fire of about 4,000 rounds per minute and the highest muzzle velocity. Six aviation companies submitted proposals, but the final bidders were Northrop and Fairchild Republic, and their future prototypes were named YA-9A and YA-10A. $28.9 million was allocated for the construction of the first, and $41.2 million for the second. The creation and testing of prototype guns for the future aircraft, in turn, was entrusted to General Electric and Philco Ford. YA-10A took to the air first, ahead of its colleague by a mere 20 days. In fact, none of them had decisive advantages except that the Northrop YA-9A was more maneuverable and had better acceleration characteristics, while the Fairchild Republic YA-10A was more economical and easier to maintain. By 1973, Fairchild received the first contract worth $159 million for the production of 10 pre-production aircraft, the first of which took off in 1975. A little later, the same GAO-8 Avenger airgun, which is one of the most powerful artillery systems ever installed on American aircraft, was installed on the YA-10A. 
The gun was placed in the center of the fuselage, taking up half the space available. This is why the nose landing gear was forced to move, setting it not along the center line, but slightly to the right. The effectiveness of the GAU 8A was tested on American M48s and Soviet T-62s received from Israel. It turned out that in the latter, it can cause fire and detonation of ammunition when firing at distances of up to 3,937 feet. Through years of testing and extensive combat use, the A-10 has been exceptionally combat-hardened, capable of withstanding direct hits from armor-piercing and high-explosive shells up to 23mm caliber. In case of loss of hydraulics, it was equipped with a dual hydraulic flight system and a backup mechanical system. The Warthog came out so fierce that it is able to fly even with only one engine, half of the tail, half of the wing, and one elevator, which makes it a true Terminator in light of its other fellow combat aircraft in the American fleet. Full-scale production of the A-10 was launched in February 1976, and just a month later, the first Warthog was accepted by the U.S. Air Force Tactical Air Command. The project was so successful that the peak production of the A-10 reached 13 aircraft per month, and the total deliveries by 1984 reached 715 units, including two prototypes and six test models. At the start of mass production, the planned service life of the Warthog was 6,000 hours. It was soon increased to 8,000 hours, which was common for the service life of military aircraft. With this, cracks appeared in the part of the hull where the outer sections of the wings are connected to the fuselage. This problem was subsequently solved by adding cold processing. Starting with the 442nd aircraft, the thickness of the lower wing skin was also increased to extend the service life of the A-10. As for the earlier production models, their re-equipment seemed economically infeasible to the Air Force. In 1998, Grumman developed a plan to address the structural problems that arose during the operation of the A-10, deciding to increase its service life to 16,000 hours as a part of the Hog Up program, which began in 1999. During this, the aircraft received significant changes in flight control systems, new fuel tanks, and a thorough check of the engine nacelles. But more than anything, the Air Force was concerned with the potential depletion of the stock of wings for the Warthog fleet. Experts estimated that by 2011, the reserves could have been depleted and replacement plans seemed too costly with an initial cost of $741 million and a total cost of $1.72 billion over the life of the project. The best solution to the problem was to order the construction of 242 new wings, avoiding unnecessary expenses. In 2011, two A-10s took to the air with new wings that significantly improved their combat readiness, reduced maintenance costs, and extended the life of the legendary aircraft until 2035. But this still seemed to fall short, since by 2016, Boeing had announced its intention to use the old ones until 2040. Since entering service, the Warthog has undergone many upgrades. In 1978, it received a Pave Penny laser sensor unit that detects targets illuminated by a laser beam and has an excellent view of the ground. In 1980, the A-10 began to be equipped with an inertial navigation system, a low-altitude safety and targeting upgrade, which included computerized gun guidance equipment, an autopilot, and a ground collision warning system. In 1999, the aircraft received Global Positioning System Navigation Systems and a multifunction display. The last system was also enhanced with an Integrated Flight and Fire Control Computer IFCCC. Further upgrades included integrated combat search and rescue locating systems and improved early warning and anti-jamming systems. Additionally, the Air Force recognized the power of the A-10 engine as less than optimal, requesting about $2 billion to replace them. Among the modifications of the Warthog, the most modern and advanced is the A-10C, created as part of the Precision Engagement Program. With digital avionics and an improved communication system, which significantly reduced the overall time to detect a target and engage it. In it, engineers managed to install a Missile Attack Warning System, or MWS, and an ALQ-184 Electronic Warfare Unit, which helps the A-10 pilot not only detect a missile launched in the direction of the device, but also determine the type of equipment from which it was fired. The first A-10Cs were deployed to Iraq in 2007 with the 104th Fighter Squadron of the Maryland National Guard and performed well on the battlefield. But in addition to all this, it's also worth highlighting the following. Why A-10B Night Adverse Weather, a prototype for working at night and under adverse weather conditions. 
The A10 PCAS is an alleged unmanned version developed by Raytheon and Aurora Flight Sciences as part of the DARPA Persistent Closed Air Support Program. A civilian version of the A-10 allocated to replace the North American T-28 Trojan working on weather research. The military avionics and oxygen system will be changed in this version, the engines and airframes will be protected from hail, and the GAO-8 Avenger cannon will be replaced with ballast or scientific equipment for studying weather phenomena. Among other things, the Common Fleet Initiative A-10 led to such improvements such as a new wing design, a data link, the ability to use JDAM, or Joint Direct Attack Munition, intelligent weapons, a WCMD, Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser System, and additional fresh GBU-39 small diameter bombs, and an integrated targeting pod like Northrop Grumman Lightning or Lockheed Martin Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod. Along with these, the kit also includes a remotely controlled radio receiver, or rover, for transmitting data from sensors to ground personnel. To the surprise of many, it turned out that, at first glance, the clumsy and seemingly not high-speed Warthog is ideal not only for supporting ground units, but also for actively hunting enemy armored vehicles. Initially, A-10s were also used to support search and rescue operations, but over time, all their efforts were concentrated on ground attack missions. The debut came in combat during the 1991 Gulf War, during which it destroyed almost 1,000 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 pieces of military equipment, and 1,200 artillery pieces. GAO-8 also proved to perform excellently, shooting down two Iraqi helicopters. The total number of sorties exceeded an insane 8,100 with an amazing combat capability ratio of 95.7%. Neither the well-praised F-16 nor the expensive stealth aircraft F-117 could boast those kind of numbers. The A-10 Thunderbolt II is in service only with the U.S. and has never been exported, although talk about the possible supply of Warthogs to the Allies has come up more than once. Interest in the craft has been expressed by Japan, Israel, Great Britain, Germany, Belgium, and South Korea. However, relevant parties have failed to reach any agreements. Furthermore, few countries could afford the operation of this specialized attack aircraft in light of the fact that the use of multi-purpose aircraft is several times cheaper. One hour of flight in the Warthog today is estimated at more than $20,000. This is still cheaper than the operation of the F-16, which racks up $23,000 per hour. And that's not to mention the even greedier F-15 and F-35, which consume no less than $40,000 to $45,000 from the budget respectively. Military Command has repeatedly raised the issue of decommissioning the old A-10, but apparently the love of pilots cannot be bought by mere modern toys on board, when on the other side of the scale lay tens of thousands of hours of fierce air combat and the guarantee that you'll return to base unscathed. Do you think we'll see the Warthog running combat missions even after 2040? Share your thoughts on this in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like today's. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.